What's going on everyone? Joshua Jones with the Fun and Affordable Mads of the Gathering here with Limited Commander Series 2 Episode 12. Don't worry, you didn't miss 11 episodes. We are Quentin Tarantino in this thing because I'm going to release one of these series videos a month, every month this year. But the first series isn't ending until the end of January, so I'm pushing 12 out as the first one then we'll go one through 11 and this series is block restricted commander so rivals of ixalan spoiler season and we just got kamana tyrant of Araska. me and my buddy jordan brown from the channel said oh boom tiny leaders and edh right there we got to cover the action so there's still cards coming out for this but this is gonna get the job done as far as being fun and effective and being able to upgrade over time as you get more cards in now this is block restricted so all 100 cards in this deck have to come from the ixalan block itself so you're going to want to run these against other cards that are restricted in some way such as the guild restricted decks that we did in series one or some of the thing that your play group comes up with now this is merfolk tribal and it's gonna be a good time let's jump into it for three mana simic and one you get a two four you can tap a merfolk you control to make this bad boy unblockable. Tap three to draw a card. Tap five to put a one one counter on each merfolk you control. Now, I like this commander a lot. It gives me an Asami, Lady of Scrolls type of feel to it. But I will say this. You're going to be wanting to win with the unblockable part more than anything else. While Asami concentrated on drawing cards, drawing cards is great. We have other ways to do that, and we have this way to do this. And the plus one, plus one counters is going to get you more unblockable. And just remember, you're trying to win this game with unblockable damage. So prioritize that over everything else. Anyways, cool abilities. Let's jump into the mana cards. Pyring Blade will let you get in early to get those tokens because... Like I said, unblockable, so getting those treasure tokens is not going to be difficult. This new card, Enter the Unknown. If you have it on one, I suggest you play it on turn one, because you can play an extra land, and that is some solid value there. It is kind of crazy to me that they did print a one-mana card that ramps you for standard right now. I totally thought that that was against the rules altogether. Whatever. If you get the slate, you can explore it and also play an extra land. The way that this works is, is that a target creature you control explores. So if the top of your library is a land and you put that into your hand, then you may play an additional land because it's this turn. So you just get to play two in that whole turn. I think the triggers resolve that way anyways, but just in case there's any rules questions for you. Here we have the compass, which isn't exactly ramp, but what it does is it lets you do something on turn two, do something on turn three, and if you didn't draw uh, your fourth land on turn three, then you can use three mana to go get your fourth land. The Drover, not a Merfolk, but it's a mana dork. Pillar of Origins is going to hurt if you're ever trying to cast something that's not a Merfolk with it, but when you're trying to cast a Merfolk with it a turn earlier, it's, it's nice. And then Treasure Map lets you scry, gives you treasure tokens, flips over into a card we'll see in just a bit. Can't pass up that value. New Horizons here, good early, good late. You can put the counter, or you don't have to. Either way, you get a ramp out. The Chalice, the Drain is something, I guess, but it's a mana rock. You gotta throw it in when you're playing Block Restricted, and then we do have access to Itlamot Cradle of the Sun, which is a solid, untapped target land. Kind of like the poor man's uh, Arbor Elf, Arbor Elf Super Chief, so I don't know what I mean by poor man, but you get the point here. We're playing, we're playing restricted decks, and we gotta work our way around it. Here we have the cards that are drawing us more cards. So the Marvel Sun new card, plenty of utility. The primary thing here is the boost to the Merfolk, and then costing our spells less, costing our spells less. That's the exact way I meant to say it there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we get to draw an extra card every turn. Of course, a pump up with the banner, and then every time we cast a Merfolk, we get to draw a card. Super good value. Here we have Treasure Cove, so we talked about that earlier. We're, we're creating some treasures in this deck, including with the Pirate's Prize, which we're getting off drawing cards. 
and we could just use it for that sweet draw value plus it ramps us out being that it was a card that we used for something else and now it's a land charter course and secrets of the golden city even if we don't have a send just solid cards here opt doesn't get us up on cards but scry and draw one can't pass it up here we have shaper sanctuary so we're going to be able to draw whenever our mofler are targeted uh, all our other creatures too we have a couple other ones and then um we get to draw that card before the spell that's targeting them resolves so we might draw into a counter and then of course with the awakening new card everybody gets to draw a card until you get 10 permanents and then just you on your upkeep not a bad deal search for sconce probably the most expensive card in the deck uh, depending on how much our commander ends up being in cost but you can't pass it up looking at a fresh card every single turn deciding if you want it or not and then with the um, type of anticipate effect on the back four cards too so that's like a frantic search or something i'm not sure what that is but anticipate plus eh, is pretty good value removal here we got despair we got melody you're taking a creature from them so in my book that's removal and then despair just locks something down on the tap side here we got Pounce, Savage Stomp for the Fightness. We get to add a counter, which is relevant to our counter strategy with the Stomp, but it never costs less because we're not running any dinos. Then the Cantrip and Slice and Twain can't pass it up for hard to deal with artifact or enchantments. Canopy, you can get a flyer if they got one out, or just get a troublesome uh, enchantment. I know I'm going to be looking for Kather's Crusade to target with this thing. That thing has been a pain in my butt lately. Here we got Dive Down, Blinding Fog, so a little, of course, the fog action, but the Hexproof too. And then with Dive Down, we get a little butt toughness, and then one of our creatures, you know, maybe our commander or something like that, is going to get Hexproof. We got some counter spells and spell pairs, the dispersal order in Swindle, token creators here. Also a little Combato Trico in the order, say if we're already in the past priority stage of declaring attackers, then they want to, like, remove one of our creatures by returning it to our hand or destroying it or something we're only going to be able to pay one blue to counter that look out dispersal it's always going to cost three we're not running any pirates spell pierce then cancel because it's in set so we got to run it here we got some utility in the boon we get to put counters around like i said there's synergy with that primal amulet to make our instance and sorceries cost less but also double them up and the primal wellspring path of discovery explore why not creature comes in might as well get a rip a land off or have it enter with an extra counter can't pass up the value on this deck here we have the tempo so Araska, just a little Maze of Its style thing, and then some Cyclonic Rift style, but only for one player in the review gear. And our commander with the lieutenants, Mistbinder, so just the Lord, and then Warden of Waves for that cost more to target our Merfolk abilities, along with these utility Merfolk with some flying unblockable. A little bit of shaper land situation when you're attacking. Uh, you don't have to attack though, but if you wanted to, you could. And then, of course, whenever um, you want, you can tap this out to our commander's ability. And then Wine Striker just to get Strider to get in for the, some of that flash flying value. Here we have the tempo cards. So these two guys right here, we run the collar just uh, tapping this stuff down. Here we have the Speaker Sneak and Warrior that all give boost to themselves of the plus one plus one under their conditions. The Sneak can't be blocked and then whenever we ETB a Merfolk it's getting that value. Here we have the Explorers. We're running three Explorers including Branch Walker and Wayfinder which are known and then the Ranger here which Explorers Explorers. So double Explorer. Kind of like four explorers, but only three. You get it. We're exploring. It's it's explore time. Explore. <laughs> Oracle here for uh, some combat damage. Draw Thunder Voice to Shana. Also an alternate commander. Our commander costs three, so that means that we can theoretically play it on three, and if it dies, play it on five, and if it dies, play it on seven. So three chances to play it before you would have been able to play Voice of Thunder. So go with the lower end of the curve, but if you put Deshauna in some games, and then just, I don't think you would um, 
be effective in a negative way too bad it would just provide some variance to your gameplay and then the adept here doesn't get us up on cards but replaces it so here we have the waters and ambush to create tokens for us and then in the case of the ambush allow us to make any of our more folk unblockable anytime we want and then we are running some um like 26 different merfolk so waters is going to get us plenty of tokens here we have the merfolk that care about counters so either to make them unblockable or to put counters on them or to put counters on themselves or to make our lands have counters just counter counter synergy for days with these merfolk especially considering that our commander is going to be able to also put counters on our mer merfolk um you know extra synergy wise shapers of nature is probably the biggest payoff for that because we can remove them to draw cards and then in the case of the jade guardian having hexproof on um the jade guardian is going to be able to uh, uh allow it to be pumped up to get in i guess that's all i want to say about that all right moving on here we have our lands, so 37 lands in total. The five non-basics that are playable on our colors that came in the Ixalan block, along with 16 forests and 16 islands. You can find this deck in MTG Goldfish, 877-294, for $65. Looks like 66 bucks there, not including the cost of whatever rivals cards were spoiled that aren't on TCG Player yet. So I believe in total you get... Um, 60 cards, 5 of which are uh, non-basic lands from this cart. So if you head on over to MTG Goldfish, you could just click the uh, buy from TCG Player or wherever else you want to buy cards from and get them from there. So I hope you like Kamana. I hope you like the restricted, limited uh, EDH series, uh, including the guilds. And now we're moving into... Um, the blocks. The first actual one coming out in February is on the Alora block, so if you like Alora, you might want to check that out. I went with the, the Jun guy over there, not the dragon, but Kresh, as you'll see. A little spoiler alert on top of our spoilers already. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you want, subscribe and share. That'd be great. And also, I'm going to try to make it so right now there's a little thing popping up in the corner to take you over to Jordan Brown's Tiny Leaders deck tech on Kamana. For Fortnite Affordable Magic the Gathering, I'm Joshua Jones, and I'll see you next time.